Hello coders, this is Jared with Renaissance Coders and today we are going to take a deeper dive into the Unreal Engine 4 viewport panel. So far we have covered the basic functionality within the UE4 viewport such as how to move around in the viewport and rearranging the viewport for maximum display awesomeness. Now we are actually going to take a look at some of the deeper functionalities within the UE4 viewport. The viewport is probably one of the more powerful panels in the UE4 interface, so it makes a lot of sense to do a deep dive into the hidden functionalities of this panel. Now, as you can see, the panel my panel configuration may be a little different from yours. If you watch the previous video from this playlist, then you can see how to easily manipulate the panels in UE4. Now there are quite a few elements that we are going to cover in this video, so strap in and get ready. We're going to be moving through things fairly quickly. The first thing that we are going to take a look at is the Viewports Options menu, and that is actually located up here in the top left corner and is represented by this upside down triangle. If I click on this, you can see Viewport Options showing up. And there are several options in here that are toggleable by a checkbox. So I think I just created a word, toggleable. The first one is real time and you can toggle this by clicking on this checkbox so it's off now. I'm going to turn it back on and basically what this shows is as an example a particle system in the game. If this is toggled to on then the particle system will continue to run in the level. So let's go ahead leave that on and drop in a particle system. So I've just got this basic fire particle system from the starter content and as you can see that's running. Now if I go back into my viewport options and uncheck real time, now you can see that it is frozen in time. So this particle system is no longer executing. Okay, let me go ahead and delete that. Okay, the next thing we're going to take a look at is the show stats toggle. And sometimes when you do, click on show stats, it will do the show FPS as well. If you had show FPS turned on previously. So I'm going to go ahead and click on both of these and the stats is going to show us messages about the level and maybe some error messages. This one just says lighting needs to be rebuilt. That's because I've moved around some objects and it's also showing us the frames per second. As you can see here, this is beneath 30 frames per second, which is not good for a game, but that's because we are in the editor in editing mode, not in play mode. So if I click on play here, this should rise up so as you can see here it's right at 30 it's still not at 30 so we probably need to run some more optimizations on this you know if we were to build it that would probably go up to above 30 and um, I'm sure there's some other things we can do here to make sure that that is going over 30 so let me just move back to my position here okay so let's turn these off and when you notice when you toggle show FPS that it's going to turn off show stats as well and if I click off show stats then it toggles off show FPS and again turn it back on show FPS turns on automatically okay so the next thing is the show toolbar and the toolbar as you can see is this or was this toolbar across the top of the viewport now I typically have this on because I like to mess with the settings quite a bit but if you find some settings that work best for you then you may want to turn this off you know just so that way you have a little more real estate inside of your viewport and that's really personal preference. The next thing, and we're not going to take a really deep dive into this because there's a lot of stuff in here, is the stats. And this just sort of adds the additional stats that we can take a look at. And as you can see, there's a lot of stuff in here. I would encourage you to go and take a look at this on your own time, um, you know, and see more of the options that are available within here. But we're going to move past this for now and look at the field of view. And this actually adjusts the field of view for the viewport camera. So you can just, again, click and drag, and this is sort of like a slider, just upping or upping the value or taking the value down, depending on which way your mouse is moving. You can also click inside and then just write out a number. Oops. Sorry about that. Click inside and write out a number, press enter, and that's going to set it back to 90, which is your default value. Okay. You can also mess with, with the far view plane. We're not going to do that right now, but I mean, if you see, you can see if I toggle it up or down, that's not really having much of an effect. So, there's a toggle here for cinematic previews, 
This allows matinee or sequencer, sequencer previews to play in this viewport. We don't have any of those previews, so this really isn't going to do anything for us, so I can turn it off or turn it back on. You know, it's not really going to affect anything right now for us. The game view is actually fairly interesting. If you toggle this, you can see that the gizmos all disappear as well as the grid. And this shows your view, it shows your level as if you were in game, which can be fairly useful. You know, if you've got like a lot of gizmos showing up, just really crowding the viewport, then you can turn this on and look at your level like you would in game mode. The immersive mode here is another really interesting one. You can see when we toggle this to on, the viewport, viewport takes up the whole screen, the other panels sort of animate off, and now our viewport takes up the full screen. So this could be useful, again, if, if you wanted to look at game mode and you know you really want to get a really large view of your game or your level, then you can do this. Um, there are two ways to exit immersive mode. The first one is going back to the toggle, clicking on it, or unchecking it, or you can actually click up here, and that's going to take you out of immersive mode. Okay, the last thing we're actually going to take a look at for this menu is the bookmarks. And you can actually set bookmarks, um, which are sort of like quick travel or fast travel locations for your camera. And so I'm just going to go and do set bookmark, set bookmark zero. And if I move away from the bookmark, go back into the menu, bookmarks, jump to bookmark zero, then it takes me back to this position. So this could be fairly useful if you're working in a large level and you want to move between rooms or like castles or you know whatever you know you can move very quickly using that option okay I did want to go ahead and highlight these other ones you can create a camera from your current position clicking on by clicking on this button you can change the layout of the four panel views um, we're gonna cover that a little bit later and you can also take a look at the advanced settings by clicking on that it's gonna take you into your general pre or your editor preferences and you can see there's a lot of different settings in here for control look and feel, grid snapping and preview, but for the sake of time we're not going to dive into those right now. So I'm just going to exit out of that. So the next thing I'm actually going to cover up here is the different views you can go into. And if you click on this perspective button in the top you can see that we've got several views outlined here. The typical default is going to be pers perspective, which is just based on your camera view. We also have like orthographic, or top orthographic which takes us into this view and by default is in wireframe mode. You can also view from bottom, left, right, front, and back. You can also do a cinematic camera. I haven't really... the really big difference here is it adds these uh, black bars on the bottom and it's also telling me that I don't have any level sequencers detected and that is because obviously I don't have any in this scene so that's not going to really do a lot for us so I'm going to go back to the default viewport and perspective mode okay so the next thing we're actually going to take a look at is this lip button here if you click on it you can see that there are several view modes outlined inside of this menu and you can change these to sort of change the view mode and this is just showing the textures that are being applied to these objects you can do this in several different modes. If you're in wireframe, this can get a little hectic on busier levels. Um, you can do detail lighting, which takes the textures off and just shows how the lighting and the reflections and everything are being applied. You can look at just the reflections. So this is just sort of showing how everything's being reflected, um, where the reflections are hitting, or lighting only, so that takes off the reflections and it's showing you where the light is hitting on these surfaces. Okay, there are a few other things we can look at here, but for now, we're just going to keep moving on. Again, these are pretty in-depth options, but we're not really going to mess with those at this point. So, let's go ahead and move on to the Show menu. Now, inside of the Show menu, we, we can... Well, actually, let me change this back to Lit. And inside of the Show menu, we can actually change what is being shown on our viewport. So, for example, if I remove the grid, then the grid is gone, right? So, just toggle that on and off as you see fit. Also if I had navigation in this scene then I could click this and the navigation would show up. But I don't have navigation in this scene so it doesn't really do anything here. The next thing is the static meshes. I can hide the static meshes if I want to. I can also hide translucent objects which is this statue here is translucent lucent, so I can toggle that. You can also do post processing so like the bloom that you can see you can take that off if you want to. There are again a lot of settings in here that you can play with and I definitely suggest you go in and take a look at these and sort of maybe play with them a little bit and see what these are actually doing. But 
again we're just going to move pretty quickly through this to try and keep the length of this video down so the next thing we're actually going to look at is that four pane viewport mode and to access that mode you actually have to go up to your top right here and click on it and now you can see that we have these other viewports that are in wireframe mode so we've got the left front and top all showing up here and one interesting thing with these three wireframe views is that if you move one move inside of one the others move as well so just keep that in mind if you're using this and another thing to note is that you can actually toggle things on a per viewport basis so if I turn off the toolbar for this one notice that this these still have the toolbar so again I can turn off the toolbar for these which is kinda cool um, I don't really use these modes a lot. They could be useful to see if, um, for example, like this chair, I can zoom in and see if it's overlapping with the floor. Of course, I can tell it's not, but I can make it overlap, and now we can see that it is going through the floor. And you can actually see this in your perspective mode or view mode as well down here. Luckily, I have surface snapping turned on, so I can move it back up pretty easily. Now, to a exit this, all you have to do is click on this button again. And that the setting we were looking at earlier down here with the layouts really affects that view mode that we were just looking at. So if I change this, to, then you can see our view changes. So now we're in this different view mode, and we've got these panes in a different arrangement. Now, typically, I like this four pane just because everything's sort of the same size it just makes a lot more sense you can resize these if you want to but again I don't really use this view mode um, very often so again I guess that's more of a personal preference type thing okay guys so that's gonna do it for this video please like and subscribe if you learned anything new and as always thank you for watching